Yep, it's a good old just Ulamog on turn 4. Who doesn't know and love it? Yep, Satoru Mazawa, activate. Changing outcast. You're an Eldrazi, I know, but there is a bigger Eldrazi here, and that is Ulamog. We Hello YouTube, all welcome to Fine Day. Today we are going to have a look at Satoru Umezawa in Historic Brawl. This deck aims to win by playing an evasive one drop on turn one, oh, usually, and then using the ability uh, of these various ninjas, activating them in Jutsu ability by returning an unblocked creature we control to our own hand and then replacing it with an attacking ninja, for example, with Ingenious Infiltrator. We can return a one drop that is unblocked to our hand, and then it comes in attacking and we draw a card because the ninja is dealing damage and that is fine and dandy, right? Satoru Mazawa uh, amplifies this game plan by it, it, it giving it two like, li like angles of attack here. First and foremost, it's just generating card advantage, because whenever we activate a ninjutsu ability, we get to look at the top three and put one of them into our hand, which is pretty great, so it keeps the cards flowing. But most importantly, um, each creature in your hand has ninjutsu four. So we have these huge, huge threats that basically have all immediate board impact, and then uh, we can just like turn one, um, one drop, that is evasive. Turn two, do whatever we want for interaction, like agonizing remorse, whatever, right? Turn three, Satoru Umezawa. And then turn four, just swap in our one drop for a Lula Mog, for a Razakath, Jinga Texas, all the fun cards, you name it, we have it, right? Uh, the reason why we're not absolutely overloading on um, like big stuff, like we only have 10 things we cheat into play, one of them is an Imrith that doesn't get reduced that much, um, is because I still want this deck to be playable even if Satoru Mazawa gets just removed like 3-4 times, right? So um, yeah, this deck needs to be playable without him. Uh, but still needs to do powerful enough things uh, while he is on the board. Um, another thing here, you might have noticed that I don't run any 2 mana counter spells, and that is because the mana in a ninja stack is really really tight, whereas rogue tribal usually plays at instant speed because all the rogues have flash. Uh, this is not the case for ninjas, and ninjas actually operate quite the opposite, in that they want to use their mana and their turn as much as possible. Because you... You can ninjutsu multiple times uh, on the same creature. So what do I mean by that? Let's say I have a biting palm ninja. Or, uh, yeah, let's say I have a biting palm ninja um, on the battlefield, right? And um, it has no counter on it. Uh, well, because like, okay, just for clarification, it enters the battlefield with a menace counter, and then when it deals combat damage, I can remove that menace counter, and then look at their hand and exile one of the cards. Nice. And I used that up that ability already, now it's swinging in, not blocked. Okay, what do I do? I now ninjutsu in the, for example, Moonsnare Specialist, and when it enters, I can return up to one target creature to its own ascent. Nice, I can like return the tap mana drop to the hand, uh, all cool, right? And then the moon snare specialist comes in attacking, but this is still an unblocked creature, and I can now swap this back for a biting palm ninja that enters with another mana counter on it. So I can return that creature to the hand and then just like exile it with biting palm ninja, or like just take something else completely, right? So there are really cool lines we can take, and because we can just ninjutsu over and over and over and over and over, um, we really want to use our mana. That's why basically all the interaction in this deck is one mana. And we're even going so far of playing like car, like two for ones uh, on ourselves, just because mana is m usually more important than cards in hand. March of Swirling Mist specifically is a really cool tech card here. Uh, so the usual mode we're doing is we are exiling a blue card from our hand, uh, phasing two uh, target creatures out, and uh, using one blue mana. Like that is what we're doing with this card on average. 
but this has a ton of utility. Let's say we have two creatures, which is usually the case. Um, like, let's say Satoru Imazawa and something big. Or like, uh, before we ninjutsu, it's Satoru Imazawa plus uh, just a random, uh, like, one drop. Now they board wipe, and we march our Swirling Mist, phase both creatures out. Cool. Um, uh, another application is if they have a bunch of blockers that we currently can't deal with, but we could deal with them if we would just got our like big things in our play, like, like a Toxel, right? Let's say we it, it we're against elves, we need this Toxel to go in, but they have blockers uh, like with reach, so th that is kind of annoying. We can just phase those blockers out. Now um, we can freely swing in, and we have our Toxel in play, and that is just extremely, extremely backbreaking. So we, this is a very, very critical mass deck. So usually, like we can't afford to do a lot of like that many things that are not directly fitting in our game plan. So we're playing a bunch of one and uh, even zero drop evasive creatures, and then one at two with ornithopter that has a multi-purpose. Right? Usually, we want to ninjutsu off of one drops. So there are like fifteen of those in total. Um, 14 one, one or two zero drops and then the ornithopter and then we have a bunch of ninjas and I believe the count currently is 12 uh, it's 13 we have 13 ninjas here and then 10 big the uh, big things we supplement this game plan with card advantage engines like rogue class we have uh, coastal piracy reconnaissance mission and it was just evasive one drops curiosity and curious obsession are just drawing you a ton of cards as well we have basically all the one man interaction we can like find bone shards blood sheaves thirst because we value our mana that that highly and uh, we have some turn two plays because again our like we can just one drop uh, something on turn two uh, Satoru Mazawa uh, swap uh, and then Nijutsu in the big thing right but that leaves us room to use check for traps agonizing remorse right uh, those kinds of things so yeah, this is the overall idea on this deck. Um, I m tried to make it as good as possible and in a world where Satoru Mazawa gets removed three, four times in a row. And yeah, let's see how this works out. Uh, hope you enjoy the deck. If you do, uh, throw me a like. It helps the channel a lot. We're almost at the 1,000 subscriber mark, and uh, I am I am impressed. Thank you, thank you very much, guys. And uh, yeah. Let's do this. We are ready to play against the Wanderer. And uh, going first should be extremely, extremely important here. Um, let's model this. No blue. Uh, I think this hand is decent. We can go haul into... Like, I, I have to play the Hive and like our hand is basically full blue and these two black sources are a bit annoying, but Fairy Seer can hopefully fix all draws here um oh this guarantees us the jinga taxes though yeah and that yeah that's exactly what i want to draw actually because then on turn two we keep up the brazen borrower maybe honestly okay it's brazen borrower versus uh, thousand face shadow and the one card I would play around doing so is um, uh, Elite Spellbinder because I can only bounce like a two drop that they're going to play here with the Brazen Borrower but those usually don't have flying or reach and I really 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 want to get this Jinga Taxes into play um, so by playing the thousand face shadow I would have two attackers and one of them goes through if they have the uh, have that card. Um, yeah, I think there is nothing I, I necessarily need to bounce, so... Okay, talk myself into it. Uh, let's see how it works out. If they have removal for Satoru, that's kind of unfortunate. So the reason why it is so important in this matchup to go first is because our uh, creature enters the battlefield tapped into attacking, right? And if we ninjutsu in and then they flash in the Emperor and then they just exile the Jinga Taxes, that would be pretty, pretty bad. But since we're going first, we're ninjutsuing this in before they can actually play the Emperor here. Okay. So yeah, we are absolutely free to just drop this Jinga Taxes on them. 
Mm -hmm. And they are in a lot of trouble, actually. Yeah. Mana is kind of awkward, right? But, uh... I mean, what you gotta do? Just peel off a blue source off the top of with the Toro, probably? I mean, I could just go for the Razakath as well, but I feel like just the blue source will uh, do us... Like, a favor here. Mm hmm can the Jutsu of the Thousand Face Shadow and then getting Moonblade Shinobi here um, only cost three to Ninjutsu, which is great. <clears throat> so yeah, now they are okay. Wait, they can just deal with the Jing Taxes though with uh, Wandering. Yeah, they could have they could have Wandering Emperor as well. Oh yeah, true, because that doesn't get um, countered by the Jing Taxes. That's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. So let's see. What do we do? What do we do? Um interesting, interesting. I feel like I wanna attack with the thousand face shadow. The question is, how do we exactly do this? Uh, I I think I wanna actually just a ninjutsu a moonblade shinobian because that lets me look at the top cards Ooh, a pilfering imp maybe i want to have that just as an evasive card i already played my land right yeah yeah sure strixhaven stadium sure Wait, they're already 11. Wow, that's so good. And now, Pharisee, Pilfering Imp. I have a bunch of... Um, I can draw a bunch of cards here off of Curious Obsession, and when worst comes to worst, uh, I can just bounce Helios Punishment in the right moment with the Brazen Borrower here. They won't expect that. <laughs> ah, there's the lead Spellbinder. A card that I did anticipate, after all. Just a bit, a little bit too late. Hey, why... I mean, oh, uh, Rede would have also worked, right? Yeah, like, any, they, they play few flyers, but they play some. Okay, Brazen Borrow. Um... If I... Okay, this is interesting. Um, if I bounce this elite spellbinder, I can actually crash it with both. I guarantee that they... Uh, that I get this curious obsession through. It's kind of weird. Giving back... Oh, wow. Um, yes. I think that's what I want. Yeah, swinging with everything. Except the Satoru, otherwise they can just like double block it. Weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to play the Nashi Moon Sage Scion here. Okay. Uh, let's use this ninjutsu ability and return the Fairy Seer. Yep. Satoru Mazawa triggers. Um, I can blood chase the Starfield Mystic, and then they're like, don't have enough. They then there are three devotion, but they can just play the Wandering Emperor to have the devotion again. Didn't play land yet, so I'm going to take the island here. Um, maybe I just get a land off of this. Uh, Nashi, but I'd rather play... Like, I can only play one of the two cards, so probably not getting the land here. Okay, the rest versus planes. Sure, the rest you. Play my blue source. Okay, that's a pretty good card, actually. Um, Fairy Seer and 
hold up wash away. I like that. I like that. Let's see. How many counters are on this punishment? Did I mess up uh, at one time? I can't remember. I think I, I forgot one of the Junk Attacks' activations, didn't I? Maybe? I'm not sure. Okay, let's see. They can give uh, their creatures lifelink with Heliod, which is probably going to be relevant. Oswald Fiddlebender. Well, that is something I didn't expect here. Oh, that could be a really spicy tech. Mm, I'm just going to let the Heliod go through. No? Okay, sure. So that means, yeah, wash away. Could have waited a bit, opponent. Maybe you wanted me to use that mana on my turn. Um. Honestly, like I can just bounce two things here, thanks to. I don't know. I only bounce one thing because this is currently not active. But I feel like if I lead Spellbinder, um, Curious Obsession, the Pilfering Gimp, swing in with everyone. Yep. Mm hmm. Now they go to two. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. And let me draw a card here. Seems nice. And... Um... I think I, I could have just copied this Jingle Taxes uh, a long time ago, actually. Right? Like, I could have just copied it and then... Um, yeah, they died to my flyers, but I could have copied it and let the original die. Ah, huh, interesting. GG. We are ready to play against Ishin. Mm. I mean, this hand works out if it works out, but it doesn't work out if it doesn't work out, you know. I just need to draw two lands and hope they don't have the removal. Fair enough. Uh, just need to draw one land and hope they don't have the removal. Fair enough. Maybe I just slow roll this, wait one turn. Uh, because like Nezahal and Ulamog are so hard to answer. I can just play a bit safer with this March of Swirling Mist. Mm, yeah, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Let's see what's going on there. Oh, well. Um, sort of Body Mind is going because uh well no no yeah yeah, yeah that, that is fine because i can just use my spell piece for removal spell and then march of swirling mist in response to um in response to the farewell and then if they say creature and they only it's a one-sided board wipe basically it is pretty hilarious. Okay, since I know what is going on over there, um, I am uh, super incentivized to just play the Satora out because just drawing a land here, yep, there is the land. Super, super high upside. Yeah. Okay, so the interesting thing here is um, they could have played Ishin on three and then on turn four Ryu and attack with Ishin twice and the Sun God Delta. that's a bit more damage but maybe they value getting the life of the Sentinel here. Okay, um, moment of truth. Uh, they don't have, yeah, they're missing a bit of mana here for this farewell. And that is their downfall because yeah, my deck is not going to play nice. It's just a question of what do I want to do to not be nice? I think it's just a normal, right? 
Yep, it's a good old just Ulamog on turn 4. Who doesn't know and love it? Yep, Satoru Mazawa, activate. Changing outcast. You're an Eldrazi, I know, but there is a bigger Eldrazi here, and that is Ulamog. We even get to look at the top 3, get one card. If we get Mox Amber, sadly we didn't. That would have been nice, certainly. Uh, secure a land drop for the next turn. And boom! Turn for Ulamog, hitting face, and the opponent is in trouble. Yeah, pretty, pretty disgusting. Starting next turn, I can keep up March of Swirling Mists. So that is also pretty disgusting. I would have loved, yeah, Mox would have been really nice. Right? Um. Yeah, we can soak up three damage here. Yeah, so Ryu's Storm is actually interesting in a way that it kind of doesn't work, which is pretty funny. Um, because they get an additional combat phase, right? But their creatures don't get to untap during that combat phase. So yeah, Ryu's Storm is an interesting card. It does work with Ishin on curve pretty nicely, but kind of doesn't work in practice. Um, so, uh, how do we not die though? Uh, that is an actually interesting question. <laughs> I guess I have to keep this... Uh... Oh no! I think I can just... Oh yes, I can just phase out their board with this March of Swelling Mist. Oh, that's so dirty. Um... Okay, let's see. I mean, I can f No, I need to phase out the board during their turn. Ulamog, yep, that is happening. Mm-hmm, sure, and if they don't block, they're dead next turn. If they do take the block, oh, interesting. Okay. So yeah, changing outcast. Play that. Sure. And then... Uh, yeah, I can just play it safe. Spectral Sailor, I can always just spell Peace of Farewell. No need to Swirling Mist. Can pitch the Nether Hall or the Curiosity, but probably just going to pitch the Curiosity here. Um, so far I'm actually not in danger of dying yet, but I feel like, no, 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 this is fine, because like, I d I'm not even dead to lightning gold, because I can just block the Asian like this, yeah, perfectly fine, six life, more than enough to work with. They land drop farewell, I spell pierce, and they just surrender. Oh, uh, yeah, I had tons of protection actually there. GG. We are ready to play against Dovin Bon. And uh, let's see where this game takes us. Ah, man, I would have loved to have a one drop here. But I think I have to put this away. Maybe I'm supposed to keep this just because I'm expecting the Mazawa to get countered, but I mean. What do I even do then? With this hand? Yeah, let's pitch it. Yeah, I think this hand is much better. <clears throat> okay. Start on start out on the command tower. Go with Ornithopter. And this hand is like perfectly playable even if uh, Sotaro gets countered. Which is pretty nice. So yeah, Ornithopter. Um so interesting enough. So Toro's like the activated abilities are for the creatures in hand. So Do uh, Dovin Ban doesn't actually prevent us from using the Jutsu. <clears throat> okay. Um. I mean, we know what's up. They know what's up. Um. It is me just not playing into any counter magic whatsoever. I'm just going to play out the Sliver for Master. S. Richard Garfield intended in my main phase one. 
<clears throat> Esther, revitalize. Draw three life, sure. Got it. <clears throat> Maybe I was supposed to just wait on the sliver for Master. Who knows? But you know, um. Now, Satoru. I'm going to. If they counter it. I'm probably just letting it go through. I mean, maybe I, I just don't think. Oh. Ooh. Interesting. Can now Moon smear, smear, Snare Specialist here? Oh, yeah. Well, no. I'm going to use this Dokuchi Silencer just to um, trigger a Satoru Mizawa here. That's all there is to it because I really want to like get my value. Yeah, make my land drops. I think that's really important Because like my hand is really expensive And just making land drops is so valuable good valuable because eventually you can just cast your big threats Coochie silencer doesn't do much here yeah. Um Klein they don't have anything I want to destroy in fact, they don't have anything at all. Cast out, sure. Gets rid of Satoru, that is fine. <clears throat> then, are they going to play Dovin Ban is the question. Hmm. So I'm currently at 5 mana, 6 mana next turn. So that's the Toru plus miscast up, which is great. Ah, yes, perfect. Now they do the Dolan ban. Um, I can actually kill this Dolan ban if I want to. Do I want to? I guess I want to. So yeah, let's do it. So sliver for first. Returning Ornithopter, and now the Moon Snare costs less. Which is great, because now I have Miscast. So it's zero on the return. I could have also, like, used the Dokuchi Silencer, actually, by returning it, and then, like, basically doing a swap back and forth, and then killing the Dovin ban with it, but then the, the Kuchi Silencer would have ended up on the battlefield and if I can avoid it, I'm just like not going to do that. So now, sure, Elspeth's Conqueror's death happens, I don't care for that. Would have been a bit more annoying if that happened on something more relevant. So Satoru now, um, Curiosity, because I, I actually can't uh, hold up Miscast here because of the second chapter of Elspeth's. I just want to canter, but make my land drops. If they take their time off to board wipe, I actually have time to just deploy this Demon of Loathing. <clears throat> so. Private Lamblet, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, we are in business. <clears throat> so do I want to draw a card? Or do I value dealing like a, a bit more damage to them? Uh, actually, I can just play Demon of Loathing and Ulamog, but I think that's a bit overkill. So here's the question. I can ninjutsu in this Ulamog now, or I can ninjutsu it after um, damage. It's one more turn though, right? It's, it's one less turn that it kills them. Yeah, I think ninjutsuing it now um, so it basically curious that it was a cantrip here, but that's fine, I guess. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, we take those. The duress. And... We're absolutely fine just doing this, right? Yep. Miscast you. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Now they are kinder in trouble because I have lethal bot next turn. 
Um, of course, if they board wipe, this Taurus still dies, so it's not lethal anymore, but, you know, Ulamog is still a sizable threat. They use their cast up, they use their Elspeth's Conqueror's death. They can phase it out for one turn with Teferi Time Reveler, that, uh, uh, Teferi time. Master of Time, that is a thing that they can do. But my next turn is going to be Obnoxious, just because I lead on the rest. And, um, that's not very pleasant for them. So yeah, start with the rest, before I do anything whatsoever. <clears throat> Tail scent. Um, Dovin Grand Aberta can actually just get a couple of blockers in there. So I feel like I'm taking that. So, yep. Get it. And I want to just kill this Teferi now. Um, honestly, maybe I just want to put in the Demon of Loathing as well, just for good measure. Um, if I if I ninjutsu off of the Satoru, it doesn't trigger, because ninjutsu puts it into hand as a cost, so Satoru is not there to even say, see the uh, ninjutsu being put on the stack, because it's like already in my hand. Kind of interesting situation here. Um, I think I just want to hold the Demon of Loathing back. back. Like, if they somehow deal with my board, I'm just going to commit a bit more here, and that is the Ornithopter, right? But if they somehow deal with my board, I still have like actual threats in hand. The cool thing is, um, the Teferi Master of Time phasing something out is actually biting them here, um, because this is phased out currently, so if they board wipe, um, yeah, uh, these two get wiped, but not the Ulamog. <clears throat> Let's see. Yeah, thought so. Uh, G well played opponent. We are done with the game, so I hope you enjoyed them as much as I did. And Satoru Umezawa is certainly a force to be reckoned with. One of the coolest, abs like, absolute coolest commanders I've, like, man, this set is amazing. Like, Satoru, Hinata, all the cool cards, like, the it is, they're, the set is insane. Um, anyways, <laughs> um... I, I love the set, um, and I love this deck. I, I really like how it's playing. Um, I, I'm i an absolute sucker for ninjutsu. Um, like, I have a cube, and uh, multiple cubes, and I, you know, one of the archetypes in there is ninjutsu. And I just love drafting that deck there. And now I get to do that in Arena. And the thing here with Umezawa is... You can just build him as a straight ninjutsu commander and you don't even need to do the fatty thing. It is certainly really powerful though. So let's talk budget, right? And here you can see what, uh, why I would want to suggest somebody just using him as an like regular ninjutsu commander because there are still some ninjas I don't play. Mm, but they are just ninjas, right? But a lot of them are commons and uncommons. So you could sub basically a lot of these out for just common and uncommon ninjas. You kind of want things like Mox, Amber, Thoughtseize, Inquisition. Those are just amazing. And yes, you can play worse big uh, fairies. There are some that I've excluded because they don't have immediate border impact, but they're still very, very good. For example, Holebreaker Horror. And you say like, okay, how does Holebreaker Horror not have immediate border impact? I, I tell you how. Um, we play it on turn four, uh, and then we just tap out, and then they just have sorcery speed removal, and we're sad, right? But these all do something when they come into play, or really, or are really hard to remove, right? Ulamog, indestructible, draws a card when it comes into play, uh, protects itself, uh, draws cards, protects itself, um, kills a creature, kills a creature uh, on, on their upkeep. Uh, so even if they have like instant speed removal for their upkeep, this still triggers, right? Toxril, um can just get rid of smaller creatures. Torgar just puts them to 5 life, right? Because you ninjas is in half their life, run it down, 12 life, hits them for 7, 5 life, boom. Uh, Razakath can just like in response to uh, a board wipe, can just sacrifice the commander at very least, fetch one card, and you're still happy. And these 
all have immediate boredom packs and that's what I would recommend you to do. If you have fatties, but you don't have these fatties, sub them out for things that have immediate boredom impact, something like a noxious gear hook, right? Something that, you know, does something when it enters because don't expect your creatures to stick around if you just fully tap out to play them, right? Um, luckily, these are all really, really cheap. Um, you don't... Like, you don't necessarily need a thousand face shadow, you're rarely actually introducing it in. So, you know, just play the uh, one mana, one one flyer, or something like that instead. And, um, yeah, what you need for this deck, kind of. I, I, I would say just craft half of these. I, I don't know which half, like, just that's up to you, but, like, at least craft half of these. Uh, have a Mox Amber, Inquisition Thoughtseize, March of Swelling Mist is amazing in this deck, and then a couple of ninjas, and then you're set. The thing is, the mana in this deck is extremely strict, so you want the color fixing lands here. You do not need any of the special lands whatsoever, like Hive, uh, Castle Lock, Thwain. You don't need any of these. The four or five lands you care about are like Pathways, Katagum's Marsh, Grave, and Passage. Those are the ones that are important to this strategy. The others you can just cut. It is about the fixing, and the fixing is like... Uh, really really important as you saw in the, uh, some of the games right like you just use your colored mana a lot in in certain like ninjutsu combinations overall the deck is uh extremely potent uh, it is extremely fun and i uh i enjoyed this deck a lot so and if you enjoyed this video Man, what a transition, right? <laughs> if you enjoyed this video just leave me a like uh, subscribe to the channel it is it is a pleasure doing these videos for you, and um, it hopefully is a pleasure when you click on my video tomorrow.